जय राधा माधवा जय कुहारी जय राधा माधवा जय खुंजा बिहारी गोपी जन बला जय गिरिवार धारी जय गिरिवार धारी गोपी जन बला जय गिरिवार धारी जय गिरिवार धारी जय राधा माधवा जय खुंजा बिहारी जशोरा नंदाना जय ब्रज जन जशोरा नंदा जय ब्रज जन रावण चारे जय खुंजा बिहारी जय जमुना थी रावण चारे जय खुंजा बिहारी जमुना थीरा बना चारी जय खुंजा बिहारी जय जमुना तीरा बना चारी जय कुंजा बिहारी जय राधा माधवा जय खुंजा बिहारी
Jayam Vishnu Pada Paramahangsa Padibra Jakasharya Stathara Sata Shri Srimad His Divine Grace the A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swayam Haraj Shri Prabhupada Ki Iskand Founder Acharya Shri Prabhupada Ki Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rindi Ki Nama Acharya Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Sega Hosri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivedanta Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gaur Gopakabina Shamakunda Radha Kundigiri Gopadhana Ki Shri Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Shri Mayapur Dhamma Ki Ganga Mai Ki Jamuna Mai Ki Bhakti Devi Ki Tulasi Devi Ki Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jainatai Gaur Premanandi All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga All Glories to Shri Prabhupada So continuing with text 5. One should not accept the spiritual master without following his instructions. Nor should one accept the spiritual master just to make a fashionable show of a spiritual life. One must meet, be jigyasu, very much inquisitive to learn from the bona fide spiritual master. The inquiries one makes should strictly pertain to transcendental science. Jigyasu shreya uttamam. The word uttama refers to that which is above material knowledge. Tama means the darkness of this material world, and ut means transcendental. Generally, people are very interested in, in inquiring about mundane subject matters. But when one has lost such interest and is simply interested in transcendental subject matters, he is quite fit for being initiated. When one is actually initiated by the bona fide spiritual master, and when he's seriously engaged in the service of the Lord, he should be accepted as a Madhyam Adhikari. Right, so the idea is that the, in spiritual life, then it's, it's a matter of, of the seriousness of it, that the approach to the spiritual master is for the purpose of actual transcendental upliftment. Right, so we're not involved in it just because it's some fashion, it's something to be done. You know, just like one has so many things that you do, you, how you say, you have, have your nice car, you have in the right in the right place, you go to the yoga studio, you know, you do all the right things, you know, you go to the right restaurant, and so also you have the guru, and, and so it's not like that. It has to be, the whole purpose is that it's for spiritual upliftment. Therefore, then you don't uh, accept the spiritual master without following the instructions, right? Because that's what it's about. That's what you can get from the spiritual master, is uh, an understanding of the spiritual practice. So then that, that is then what we'll take, we'll apply to the best of our ability. It doesn't mean that we're very expert at following the order, but the point is, is it means that we're trying to follow. It means we have that sincerity. Right? So then Prabhupada's pointing out, then being a jigyasu means here that you want to know you're inquiring. Right? And so because it's about uh, this, the transcendental subject matter, then we know that this aspect of jigyasu means it's about how to come to that transcendental position, right? It's not about uh, simply, I uh, say, that there's just an interest to know and that's all, right? Because an interest to know, then it will change. Because if it's just, I'm interested and that's all for interest's sake, then when we ask whatever questions we can think of in that, concept, in that capacity, then we may find, then we move on to the next thing. Right? So it may be something else in Krishna consciousness, it may be something else not in Krishna consciousness. Right? So here Jigyasu means is that one is Jigyasu Shreya Uttamam, that one is inquiring about the Supreme, that's the kind of means what we mean. So here it means Jigyasu is not talking about the neophyte aspect, it's talking about that we should want to uh, be inquisitive on how to understand Krishna, our relationship with him, who we are, how to engage in the devotional process. That's, that's then what's here, right? Yeah, 
So then when one takes that seriously and all that, then that situates you very nicely because then the bhajana kriya becomes very fixed. Right? So, yes, so that's, that's the idea. Because madhya madhikari means now we're, we're steady. Right? The neophyte means sometimes we do really well, sometimes less well. It, it kind of moves around because of other interests or commitments like this. But then uttama platform means we're committed to the spiritual process and we're steady in that commitment, steady in our practice. You know, there's always going to be a little bit, but it's, it's minor. It's not like uh, it would be in the beginning stage. So that's then the, the so the... So when, when you can say when the, when the practice or bhajana kriya is unsteady, that's the neophyte. When it becomes steady, that's the madhyama. Right? So, so, yeah. The chanting of the holy names of Krishna is so sublime that if one chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra offenselessly, carefully avoiding the ten offenses, he can certainly be gradually elevated to the point of understanding that there's no difference between the holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself. One who has reached such an understanding should be very much respected by neophyte devotees. One should know for certain that without chanting the holy name of the Lord offenselessly, one cannot be a proper candidate for advancement in Krishna consciousness. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 2269, it is said, Jahara Komala Shradhe J Kanishtajana Krame Krame Teho Bhakta Haibe Utama. One whose faith is soft and pliable is called a neophyte. But by gradually following the process, he will rise to the platform of the first of a first class devotee. Everyone begins his devotional life from the neophyte stage, but if one properly finishes chanting the prescribed number of rounds of Hari Nama, he is elevated step by step to the highest platform, Uttamadakari. The Krishna conscious movement prescribes 16 rounds daily because people in the Western countries cannot concentrate for long periods while chanting on beads. Therefore, the minimum number of rounds is prescribed. However, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say that unless one chants at least 64 rounds a japa, 100,000 names, he is considered fallen, patita. According to his calculation, practically every one of us has fallen. But because we are trying to serve the Supreme Lord with all seriousness and without duplicity, we can expect the mercy of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is famous as Patita Pavana, the deliverer of the fallen. Hmm. Yes, so then faith that we have, then that, that when it's, when, it, when he's saying it's here, it's soft, it's pliable, means so, it's soft means it can be adjusted, it can be changed. We're not necessarily about progressing. It means that the faith can be there and then, then, then some doubt the faith is not there, something happens, it moves, it, that's the whole point. But if one is chanting on a regular basis and trying to avoid the offenses, then one comes to that platform gradually, gradually, one will come to the Uttama platform. So it's just, it's natural. So the point is, is if we chant then and we avoid offenses, then we can appreciate that the name and Krishna are non-different. That's going to take us forward very nicely, right? So, so then Prabhupada's pointing out is we're chanting 16 rounds, basically because we're not that focused on such things as chanting. We might be able to focus on other things very nicely, but this one we may not be able so good. Like if we had a two hour phone call with someone we're interested in, we wouldn't have a problem, but spending two hours chanting our japa, now that's going to be more of a problem, right? So that's the idea. So that's why then 16 is the minimum recommendation on beads. Right? But it doesn't mean that we're not continuing chanting in kirtan and discussing things about Krishna, about uh, being engaged in service for Krishna. So the idea is we're chanting 16 rounds on beads. We should be chanting 48 rounds in the way of doing services. Right? Then it takes up, then, then that you're getting in that full amount. So if you're only chanting japa, then, then, it's, then it's recommended one's chanting 64. But if one is chanting and serving, hearing, doing different kinds of services, then in that way, 
that 16 is done there, then the other part spent in other kinds of association, preaching, and these activities. And this way, then it comes out to be the same. Does that make sense? Like that. So that's the idea. Then, then one will uh, move forward very nicely. The idea is best is you're chanting 24 hours a day, right? Like Hari Das Thakur. But if you can't do that, then, you know, you, you, you take the steps down from there. So then the minimum is you're trying to get 64 rounds worth of, of hearing and chanting, remembering, preaching, associating, serving, like this. And minimum 16 of that 64 should be done on your beats. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's the idea. When Srila Satyaraj Khan, a great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, asked the Lord how a Vaishnava should be rec could be recognized, the Lord replied, Prabhu Kahe, Jada Mukhe, Shuni, Ekabhara, Krishna Nama, Se Puja, Shreshta, Shabakara. If one hears a person say the word Krishna even once, that person should be accepted as the best man out of the common group. Right? So if just anyone says Hare Krishna, they're the best person in that whole group is there. Like that. So that's because anything connected to Krishna, then that puts the living entity in a special position. Because that, that one chanting is not going to be lost. Right? So even if it's you know, not chanted necessarily in the best of form, like sometimes once going down the street, there'll be a group of people and one of them, you know, shouts out, eh, Hare Krishna, you know, something like this. Still, he's the best man in the crowd. <laughs> now, if he would chant more nicely and more pleasantly, then he'd be even a better best man from, of the, in the crowd. You understand? Yes. Yes. Is that the same sort of thing? Uh, you could say they're the best. They're the best in the crowd of karmis. But here is meaning that they've heard from the devotees, and then they're chanting based on that, right? I mean, it's, that's generally how people know, especially nowadays. Where are they going to hear it from? Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So then, yes. It may be a silly question. And if it is a silly question, then we'll stop. Okay. Yes. He's got a ticket. He's got a ticket back to Vaikuntha. No, I think that I think that goes. He's got a ticket to ride. I think that was the. He's got to, he could go back to Godhead. All right. And how do you know they're not going back to Godhead? How do you know everybody else is not going? You're the only one staying here. Uh, where is the information from that the one chanting took him back to Godhead? Six Canto. You. Yeah, and so anybody's got that position. So then. Everybody has the opportunity to purify themselves. So why are you trying to make him into something different? You understand? In other words, that's what it's meaning here. What it was uh, being pointed out. Where was that? Okay. According to his calculation, means Bhakti Siddhanta says what he talked about, practically every one of us is, is fallen. But because we are trying to serve the Supreme Lord with all seriousness and without duplicity, we can expect the mercy of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is famous as Patita Pavana, the deliverer of the fallen, right? So you have the aspect is that the Lord being pleased with the, that sincerity, one's advancing. So we're just, we're just trying to point out the greatness of the holy name that someone, if they simply chant it once, they still are in a special position. 
That's because of the holy name. But we're looking at the form of it and this and that and how can this guy advance and that we're leaving out the part of the equation that it's the Lord's pleasure that one advances. Right? Does that make sense? So the right attitude, that right trying to, trying to move forward in Krishna consciousness, trying to develop in Krishna consciousness. Right? Yes? So anybody who tries that, then they move forward. Whether it's Ajamil or the guy on the other side of the street making all kinds of funny noises. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? So therefore, don't try to find seemingly opposing elements just to point out that there's some problem because everything else is, is opposing. You want to be happy, you have a job, you make money, but you want to be happy, but you're paying a mortgage. How do those two have anything to do with each other? Right? Paying a mortgage makes you happy. You're going to pay money for 30 years, and then finally after 30 years you'll own the house. That means when you're 60. Right? That makes you happy, right? And that's one of the bills. And then what about paying your taxes? That must be, that's mostly just like ecstasy, right? <laughs> so uh, all these are con con contradictory. Or enjoy yourself, stay up with your friends, party all night, and then in the morning you feel like a truck ran over you. Specifically a Mack truck, right? I mean, somehow they're, 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 they're always the ones that run over people. I don't know why it's always Mack trucks, but, right? And so then, but you wanted to be happy, but you know that that's going to happen. So what I'm saying? The point is, is we're dealing with these contradictions, seeming contradictions in Krishna consciousness, like, oh my God, what is this? Oh no, oh, you know, all the drama, all this kind of thing like this. But your own life is just contradictory dramas going on all day and that's perfectly fine. You know what I'm saying? So what's so strange that there's seemingly something different? That's the meaning of dealing with individuals. It means contradiction. No? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so when one gets beyond trying to find these, the contradictions, especially the bigger the contradiction, the more taste we get in it, we have to learn that that taste and the difference is between the smallness and the living entity and the greatness of Krishna. You know, the affection between the devotees, the different kinds of moods that are there. That's more taste than trying to find extreme examples. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, so then if that is appreciated, then, then we can be like that, trying to understand how you're going to apply it. You understand? Because in here, are you 88 years old? No. And at 88, will you have a very young son? Right? It would be hard. And um, how many people you know that, let's say, at a young age, when they're a young man, you know, in their late teens, early 20s, then married a prostitute and is able to keep that prostitute connected to him throughout her whole life, so it's still at 88, he's still connected with that same prostitute. Right? Okay? And that means he must be providing really well. You understand? So shall we keep going here? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So the whole point is, is we point these things out as if they're such a dramatic, having such a dramatic effect on our life. And we're looking at the externals, but is that what the story's about? Or is the story about someone who, on the 
advice of the spiritual master that named his son Narayana. And at the time of death, he's calling out to his son uh, because of just that attachment. But then because his son's name's Narayan, by chanting the name of Narayan, then remembering the Lord and remembering his previous service to the Lord, then he's saved. So we're talking about the glory of the holy name. But we only see is how can this sinful guy advance in spiritual life? Because spiritual life is totally about the, the more mundane, moralistic perfection of activities. And that's its power. Not that it has anything to do with the mercy of the Lord, the connection of the Lord, that the soul is actually originally connected to the Lord. So anything in this material world is illusion. But that illusion is the powering force behind Krishna consciousness. So unless he's got his, you know, illusion all, you know, nicely in a row there, you know, like those little duckies when you take your bath, right? Okay, then, only then can Krishna consciousness work because it's all based on the moralistic concept. And if moralism's not in line, you know, the way I think it is, then it can't work because, you know, it's just like the, you know, Buddhist saying. Right? If, if, no, if I'm not there when the tree falls in the forest, it doesn't make any noise, right? Because it's about me. I'm the center of the universe. I'm, I'm the total package. Right? You understand? So, see it in, con in context of how, as an example, on the potency of the name. That's what's the point of the story. The glory of the name, that's what's the point of the story. The glory of the holy name. You know, as we mentioned, how many guys do you know that even come close to Ajamil? Right? You may know some bad guys, but you don't know guys like Ajamil. No? Okay. Otherwise, you'd have a few more tattoos than, than we're seeing, right? And you'd be wearing long-sleeved shirts. Huh? Okay, so the whole point is, is a guy like him, just by chanting the name once, is saved. So how special is the holy name? That's what we should be catching from this. And the guy across the street making all kinds of funny comments and all that and jeering, jeering at the devotees, eh, Hare Krishna, and like this and that, he's getting the benefit. Even he's chanting in a derisive way, he's getting benefit. So how great and glorious is the holy name? That's what we're supposed to glean. Not, well, how could he do? You know, he's like this. He's, you know. Because if we think that karma makes bhakti, we don't actually know what's spiritual. Spiritual is independent. So therefore, if you're pious and all that, it just makes it easier. But even if you're not pious, it still works. You know what I'm saying? Let us say we have a criminal. Do you have death sentence here? No. No, so there's no death row. I see. Life in prison. Life in prison. Okay. It doesn't quite sound the same, right? It doesn't, doesn't give the same oomph, right? Okay. So, you have somebody who is not very properly situated, you know, in part of character and behavior and all that. And someone who's very nicely situated and really, really exemplary in their behavior and character, right? And they both get a cold, right? And they both take the same medicine, right? But technically, according to this kind of theory that everything's dependent on the character, the medicine will only work for the good guy or the bad guy, the medicine won't work, right? Or does the medicine have nothing to do with that? Yes, yeah, so therefore, that the holy name's like that. If medicine can be independent of your situation, why wouldn't the holy name, which is transcendental, and is Krishna be independent to the situation? Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Head's going to stay together or it's going to crack into a lot of pieces? Because we just want to know so everybody can move back a little bit, you know? 
like that. Or you can, we can stop in time, you can run outside, and it can explode outside in the parking lot or something. You know, so. Hmm? Heavy. Okay, good, okay. So, the whole point is, is that we have to see it in context of how it'll be useful to us, unless we're looking for an excuse not to be involved in Krishna consciousness and not be serious, so we can say, oh, it doesn't work anyway, so therefore it doesn't matter that I'm involved in all kinds of mundane things, because, you know, does that make sense? If we want an excuse, Maya will give you an excuse, no problem. Well, you just have to look, there's seven p billion people with excuses, <laughs> right? Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's the, that's the point. Is that's the easy part. Trying to find some fault, trying to find some political angle. That's what most people do anyway. And how's that working out for everybody? Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so we have to look at it that the potency of the holy name is such that someone in such a bad position, just by chanting once is delivered, so then how about devotees who are practicing nicely? Right? We know Ajamil went back to Godhead. Right? But not immediately. He continued the, he, the process. Then you see that then he took up the process from the Madhyama platform, because now he became a bit serious. And then from there it talks about from, from Nishta to Ruchi, Ruchi to Asakti. Then he comes up to the platform of Bhava. Right? And then eventually, then he goes back to Godhead. But that was in the next life, not in this one. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's going to go back to Godhead. So then... You know what I'm saying? So don't stretch the examples to make it more... How you say? Give it that, you know, gossip taste to it. So that we can, you know, oh my God, this, that, and how... You know what I'm saying? Because it's not that he just chanted and right there the Vishnu Dudas took him back to Godhead. Is that the story? No. So then why say that? Because he went in the next life. And in this life, then he went and lived in a temple and just practiced his sadhana at the temple. That makes sense? Yeah, so... So now do you see any difference? He took up the process seriously after that one chanting. Right? By the association of the Vishnu Dutas. So that's what we're recommending. People take up the chanting process and the association of devotees and then it works very nicely. So that's what you see. Not, oh, he chanted once and then all this stuff happened. What, what about the association of the Yama Dutas? I mean the Vishnu Dutas. What about that service at the temple and living there and, you know, practicing a sadhana? Does that make sense? So, like that, take it more seriously, how it will be practiced in your life. You understand? Because you have to be willing that to the level that you're going to bring, put out the intensity, you have to be able to accept it. Not that you can put out the drama, and then if people work, respond on that same emotional level, then, uh, oh, it's so strong, it's so heavy, it's so this. And you can't do that. That's not, not proper. Does that make sense? Quoting from one senior devotee, when they were in a meeting, and there was a very hot topic, and, and, and he was the chairman, someone stood up and started yelling and screaming at him. The other members on the thing, you know, hey, we'll get this guy to be quiet. And the chairman says, no, no. He says, I can dish it out. And he was famous for that. He said, therefore, I can take it. I can deal with people like that. So that means I should be able to, you know, respond to stuff like that. He says, it shouldn't bother me. Does that make sense? So don't use the drama if you can't digest drama. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes? Oh, here. Here was the Jigyasu, that one? Yeah. 
Yes, yes. It has, because it's, 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 it's about inquiring about, you know, the, the Supreme Lord. So this word is used in many, many contexts in many ways. Like that. So, so that's the, the idea is that the human form of life is for about inquiry. So that's, that's good. But then it's supposed to be submissive inquiry. Submissive means with the idea I'm going to apply it. Because the first principle is I would like to know. But I mean, that means a practical knowledge, not just, you know, oh, that's interesting. You know, that kind of, we're not talking about a YouTube interest in spiritual life. We're talking about, you know, it's, it's, it's got substance, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah, it's not a, what do you call it? A, you know, the little thumbnail and next to it it says, uh, uh, say, say. What is it? Ten offenses to the holy name that they haven't told you or something. You know, one of those kind of, yeah, like that. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's not, it's that, that you want to know so that you can practice it. Therefore, if you want to know, then how will you, then you'll be inquisitive. It means if you explain nicely and you understand it, great. But that means you'll put yourself in a situation in which you can hear that knowledge. And then if one needs in the application to understand it further, then you'll ask questions. Right? So asking questions is very good. But you always have to see it's based on that first principle of actually wanting to know so that you can apply it. Like that. That's the whole point. So if someone's interested and likes to ask questions, they shouldn't, shouldn't stop asking questions. It's just if the quality of the questions are, you know, how you say, the most progressive for one's spiritual life, one just has to adjust that. Right? One doesn't have to stop asking questions. You know, it's just like you're eating food, but it's not good for you. You don't stop eating food. You just eat better food. Right? Like that. Um, Yes, yes. Then having, so therefore you'll ask in such a way so that you can apply it. Having understood how to apply it, the importance of it and how to apply it, then the third stage is you actually apply it. That's seva. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just, it's the same kind of thing. Jigyasu means you're inquiring, party, party prashna means it's the submissive inquiry. So they're all different synonyms of the same thing. Or, you know, the atato brahma jigyasa means that now we're inquiring about the supreme. So that's the jigyasa. The jigyasa means to ask. The person who's asking is a jigyasu. Right? So here he's not referring to the jigyasu, meaning of the four kinds who surrender to the Lord, the neophytes. You know, it means arta, artarti jigyasu, and jnani of someone who there's uh, anxiety or someone who's looking for wealth or someone who's just looking for knowledge. It's, it sounds interesting about the Supreme. And then the fourth is he actually wants to know about the Supreme. So the idea is you're trying to get to the fourth. He wants to know, so that means his inquiry will be better than the, jigya, than the jigasu in this context. So we can see by here, because it's been defined as someone who's sincerely inquiring and trying to gain the mercy of the Lord, you know we're talking about the fourth one, the jnani. So his questions, then that, that, that becomes the best. The other three, just having that contact with the devotees and that practice and trying to follow the instruction, then that will gradually elevate them to that platform, the, the jnani. And from that platform, the jnani, that'll bring them to the, plat the madhyama platform where they'll be situated nicely. Because they have the knowledge, they have that sincerity, they practice it, it'll naturally become steady with, by the grace of Krishna, as is mentioned. We always have to remember it's Krishna's grace. So we're doing things to try to please Krishna. So what pleases Krishna is what works, you know, whether it makes sense to us or not. Right? Does that, does that make sense? So that's why we inquire, so we know how it makes sense. But it should be done in such a way that you know that the person is inquiring so that he can understand, so he can practice. Not just, uh, how you say, taking the aspect of the devil's advocate. You know, unless it's known that you're doing that, you know, and then, like sometimes Prabhupada would do that when he'd be walking on the beach in Bombay, maybe other situations with the devotees. And then he would have one devotee take the position of the Mayavadi 
right? And then, then he would argue, and they, you know, they would present their points, probably give the things like this. So that means one devotees would have to know what is the concept of the Maya bodies thing so that you know how to identify it. And then, then by asking it, then probably would show what's our proper way of dealing with it. You know, because there in India, so many devotees have come across Maya bodies. Or, uh, I think they're cheaper than a dime a dozen. I think it's like, you could probably get a few lakhs for a dime over there, yeah. Yeah, so, like that. So, so, so that kind of thing is okay, but it's a known thing. It's, it's, you're trying to deepen your understanding and hone your skills and all that. But just to do it because one can or to do it because one thinks oneself very, very intelligent and all these things, those kind of, that kind of approach doesn't work so well. Because how are we benefited? Because we're not looking for an answer. We're just pointing out faults. You know, that I see what I've done. I found a fault. But it's like anybody can find a fault, you know. Anybody who's a detractor of Krishna consciousness, they can do it all day, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's like a miser. Because they're not willing to pay the price of Krishna consciousness, which Bhakti Thakur points out, is, quoting from Nityananda Prabhu, is surrender. Like that. So he's saying that Lord Nityananda Prabhu is in the marketplace of the holy name. And he's distributing to anybody who can come forward and pay the price. And the price is surrender. You surrender, he gives you the holy name. Like that. That's the selling sense. Yeah. Yes. Who has a question? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. It depends. It depends on 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 the the mood and all that. But the point is, is you could say that they're rightly situated, because as is pointed out here, is that they st everyone starts on the neophyte platform, and then from there, from practicing, and especially the more steady you can keep it, the more consistent then that will take them to the Uttama platform. So the point is, is if someone is steady in their devotional service, has that sincere mood and all that, then, that's, then, that, then that will be a symptom that advancement is going on. So if they just continue that, they will come to that platform. So it's, it's the main thing in, 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 in the identification is that, that they're interested in you know, sincerely interested in trying to develop their understanding and practice of Krishna consciousness to please Guru and Krishna. And when that's there, then it will work very nicely. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes.
Okay. So the, the aspect of dealing with the position is the more advanced one is, the more one is aware of how much more you could do. You understand? Just like I remember talking to top classical musicians in India. I mean, you know, like Ravi Shankar kind of level. You know, they're, they're all in that group. And <clears throat> we're talking with them about something about the music. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I had this from a f few of them, right? Not at the same time, over the years, different ones would say basically the same thing. Is that so they would say, is actually, we don't know so much music. And these are the best in the world. Because music is like an ocean. How can you know it? And so we're just like standing on the shore and appreciating the ocean and its power and its qualities. Right? So that's the point, is since you're dealing with something so unlimited, then you could see is how much more could be done, and therefore one sees one's lacking in that. So even the slightest little um, something that is not actually not Krishna conscious, they could interpret that that way, because that activity done by someone who's not Krishna conscious would be the symptom of or the lack of Krishna consciousness. But someone who's Krishna conscious, they're doing those things connected to Krishna. But they'll interpret that I'm doing these things not connected to Krishna. You understand? So it's because of their advancement they're seeing like that. Well, generally, if we're new in Krishna consciousness, we think we're doing quite good. <laughs> is that, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Huh? What's the point? You lost the point? Okay, we'll go on to the some of the come back. You had something? Yeah, you were just raising your hand to point out other people were raising the hand. Okay. okay. No? Not unfrozen yet. Okay. Yes? You spoke about how 16 rounds. How 16 rounds. Hmm. Right, but that's only if you're doing 16 rounds. Not that. Well, hey, I'll I'll, stop this. I'll just do more service, and I don't have to do any chanting. Don't don't come up with that one. If he has other commitments. Other commitments. There's more than that. Really? So, what would that? What's more than family or work? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> okay. Unless playing golf doesn't come under that, but. No, but the point is, is do we see things connected to Krishna? The more we see things connected to Krishna, because it's your choice to take up those things and do them the way you like. You know what I'm saying? There's people living very, very, that are, have families live very simply, and they take care of all that. But we've chosen that, you know, we're going to be, we want more. So that's our choice. So we can't say is we can't do the Krishna conscious because these other uh, universally accepted important things I'm doing. Well, there's a good chance you could go and ask your neighbor, and they said, "I wouldn't do that." You know what I'm saying? So that's the whole thing. Is that it's just like this? Let us say a Mercedes S class, okay? So, do we actually need it to drive around in, in Sydney? Can you get a parking place? Right? You understand? So, that's the whole thing is, w we come up with ideas that this is important, I have to have this. But the point is, is you have to balance that <clears throat> 
with what you can do in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, what happens if you're spending so much time with the occupation and all that that there's no time for the family either? Which is a very common thing amongst people who want to get ahead. So then, is that actually necessary or that's just their own feeling that I can get something done and see what I've done and see the facility and aren't I fabulous? You know what I'm saying? Which is, but that means that they, they're not balancing these things. So just as you can, you can, one should be able to balance the occupation with the, then the family, one should be able to balance occupation, family, and sadhana. Does that make sense? And when one can do, start to do that, then you can start to see all that occupation and family also connected to Krishna. Right? But if, if we're just enamored by all these things, then we won't be able to see much. Because Krishna reveals what's there. It's not that by anything that I do with my intelligence, mind, senses can reveal the Lord. It's the Lord reveals himself to the devotee. And so the devotee means one who is taking the instruction of the spiritual master, trying to apply that. That's what makes the devotee. Because otherwise someone before that aspect of, of Shraddha, then they're doing some service, right? You know, you have the Ratha Yatra and tens of thousands of people come out, they're all doing service. But they're not necessarily serious about following the order of Guru. That's what then makes the whole thing work nicely. Right? So if that's there, then one will try and see how to balance and make everything work. Right? You have a nature that's there, but the nature also has to include everything else. Because we have to, just as we say, well, I'm in nature, I have to do this kind of work. Great, but are we the soul or not? Is that part of the factor? Does that make sense? So that's the whole thing, is that the soul has to be included in the equation. If you're not, then it's not actually a complete equation. We don't have a choice. Why? Who, who's, who, who's, who's making the situation in which we don't have a choice? Why sophisticated? Why not? Why use the word sophisticated? Make it sound better. Why not use the word complicated? may not be that different. Yes, but the volume of time taken when it's more complicated is more. See, if it's simple, then it doesn't take much time. Complicated takes time. But in principle, it's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? The point is, is it's always your choice. There's no one that's sitting there and saying, you have to do this or that. But we try to create that the situation is there that by the situation I have to do this or have to do that. No, you have a choice at any time to do whatever you like. It's because you want the results of that situation. The situation is there. You see the opportunity in which material advancement can be gained. And because your interest in material attachment that's why you're engaged in it and saying, oh, I, you can't do anything else. It's because you made that decision. You know what I'm saying? It goes back, at every moment you have free will. You decide. It's just something there you value. Now, if, let's say, these situations are coming up and you weren't interested in all that, then the question, line of questioning might be different. Might be... How much do I have to do all these things? At work they expect this, this one expects that. Do I actually have to do all that? You know, how much am I obliged to? But we're saying, no, no, I have to do this. You know, there's no other way, it's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? It means I could carry on how I am and where I'm situated and get the particular amount of money I'm getting now. But there's an opportunity has come up that, uh, you know, 
during this particular time when naturally it would be the time to spend time with the family or do things at the temple, there's an opportunity to come up and I uh, can do extra work and from that make extra money and it will move me up in the eyes of my superiors so that will give future benefits and this and that. And so we're saying, well, I have to do this. But we have to do this because you want more. Right? So when we actually want more spiritually, then this, we would view the situation different. No, I have to chant my japa. I have to, you know, put in proper effort and time into the family. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So the choice is yours. Of course, there is a... I think it's a businessman's anecdote. I don't know if it's been around recently. Is that there was this, um, how you say? Yeah, there was this. Yeah. It was. It was. It, it. It was a joke that went around the business schools when they were explaining how you need to think, and it was especially being used within the. Indian business schools, right? Once there was this flight, and on, on the flight there was some representatives of the various companies. So there, was a, there were two men from, from America, two from England, two from France, and two from India. And they all, all of them had a secretary with them, one lady. So as they were flying, the plane crashed somewhere on this deserted island. So then, you know, now what to do? So the uh, American guys, then they fought with one another till one killed the other, and then, you know, he went off with the secretary, right? <clears throat> the French guys, they worked it, off, uh, worked it out amongst themselves, and all three of them went off together. The British guy, they dumped the girl and went off together. <laughs> and the Indian guys, they called up the company, what should we do? You understand? So like that, are we therefore forced? It, it makes it easy to say I'm forced, because then we take no responsibility. But we have to look at it, is this what we want? And if that's what you want, don't complain. Figure out how to make it work. Don't use it as an excuse to not do something. Does that make sense? Yes. Please, Krishna, not are the Vaishnavas pleased? No, but are the Vaishnavas pleased? Because if you please your ego, generally the Vaishnavas aren't that happy. It's a problem, because if we have big false ego, we can't see that either, right? Um, that they're happy with the service. Hmm. <laughs> um. Be attentive to the situation and see how things work. Depends on what your service is. Like if you're cooking, and people eat, eat what you cook and think it's nice, then that generally means they like it. And if they all come into the, the, into the hall and go, you know, it's time for Bashad, and then somebody goes, but that guy cooked, and then they all turn around and walk out, then you know maybe it's not going as well as you'd like. <laughs> I can remember once, GBC coming down to lunch, and it was the Manipuri cooking, and their cooking is so different from other in, the, the rest of the Indian cooking really far out stuff they do. So this one devotee, he just didn't like the uniqueness of it. You know, tastes were interesting in this, but it was just so unique. So he's coming down the stairs, I go, go, went upstairs to collect everybody and tell them it's time for lunch. Went up and he was coming already. It says, you know, oh, so what are they cooking today? And this and that. And I said, Manipuri. He just turned around and went back to his room. Are you perhaps Manipuri here and we're, we're starting something? No, don't give me this maybe crap. Don't do this. 
You're curious, but for what purpose? You want to establish what? Ultimately, what pleases Krishna, pleasing Guru. The point is, is if you want to turn it into issues in that, then basically it's late enough for me to get up and walk out. You know what I'm saying? You want to know, ask. You want to have issues, go out on the street. There's plenty of guys you can go out there and, and be a punk with. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's easy. Arguing, fighting fights, all it just means is testosterone hits you and, you know, it's fun. And then later on you'll find there are people who can fight way better than you. Does this make some sense? It doesn't. So what doesn't make sense? Okay. You have to take what's said and try to apply it, not just ask because it's interesting. How are you going to use it in your life? You know what I'm saying? So there's nothing that you don't like. You don't have any personal preferences. You don't do anything in a particular way. You have no individuality at all. You keep it private. Okay, and why do you keep it private? So you won't be exploited. Okay, and why are you worried about getting exploited? Sorry? Okay. So, therefore, then, is it important that therefore we project that privateness on everybody else? Yeah, so then, then why did you do that with the devotee that I mentioned before? Why did you take the example out of context? That's... So then why would you be asking the question in the first place? You're just doing things to please Krishna on the order of Guru. And so you're taking what he's doing and then trying to apply that into your life. That, from that point of view, if you're looking at it from that topmost point, that should be enough. But now we want that validation on how it's there. So is that validation actually important? If Guru's given instruction, we're following it. And if Guru hasn't said something that it's not going properly, and the other Vaishnavas aren't telling us that how we're applying it is not correct, why do we need validation if we're talking about this high level of pure devotional service, which you're applying on this other devotee, but you're not willing to apply on it to yourself for your own question? You have to remember is that unless you can apply to others how you apply to yourself, then things won't be balanced. You'll always, walk, you'll always feel you're wronged and everybody else is not behaving properly. Because we have to understand the material world is bad. So if we have bad experiences, it's not everybody else's fault. We've chosen to come here. That they're involved in things that will disturb us, that's not to their credit. Right? And they'll be implicated in the reactions to that. You know what I'm saying? But we're here because we've put ourselves in the situation we're in. Nobody else. So if we remember that, then we will be less judging on others. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you pick association that you appreciate. You, you know, make your endeavor to do your best to follow the order of Guru and Krishna. And life's fine. It doesn't require that the whole world is in line with justice as we feel it should be. Because it's not required. All that's required is we do our service, we go back to Godhead. It's not that when everybody else is perfect, then I can practice nicely, then I can go back to Godhead. No. We're, uh, devotional service is independent. It's not dependent upon anyone else. We apply it, it works for us. And that's the beauty of it. So you don't need validation from everybody else. 
uh, to develop pure love for Krishna. Yeah? That's good. Okay. Ata eva jara muke eka krishna nam se ta vaishnav kariha tahara saman. Okay. Ojitani continued. One who is interested in chanting the holy name of Krishna or who by practicing likes to chant Krishna's names should be accepted as a Vaishnava and offering respects as such, at least within one's mind. Right? So if anybody is interested in chanting Hare Krishna, then they're counted as a devotee. Right? So that's the principle. That's where we start from. And then we add things onto that. We have to be very, very careful. Because, see, that's what's happening here is Lord Chaitanya, because he's the one that gives the mercy. He's also the one that, that sets the standards. So if someone's chanting, that places them as a devotee. They're interested in chanting and places them as a devotee. Now, where in the devotional process they are, that's another thing. Like that. Because otherwise, if we don't do that, then we can't explain devotional service. And we can't give example of how devotees have applied it in our life, because then if we judge that that person's not a devotee by my standards, then how are we ever going to associate and discuss about Krishna? Hmm. So, here, at least within one's mind, one offers respects. Then, as more advanced, then we may actually, you know, externally offer that. So Lord Chaitanya is saying this is the beginning, because if you're on the threshold of love of God, you're on the threshold. Right? So the whole process of bhakti, then just you take that up, you just get an interest in chanting, that puts you at, that, at the door of bhakti. So that's what Lord Chaitanya is saying, they're different, they're unique, they're not the same as everybody else. Because everybody else is just interested only in the material. Now, when we come to that doorway of bhakti, we have that interest in Krishna. That's the important thing. It doesn't matter that we have so much that we're not interested in Krishna. Because that everybody in the material world has. So to have a fault, have a material desire, that's standard for the material world. But then within that, if someone has some interest in Krishna, then that's special. We have to start from there. This is advanced. But being able to find fault in others, then that's... Anybody can do that. One of our friends, a frame, famous English musician, has become attracted to chanting the holy names of Krishna. And even in his records, he has several times mentioned the holy name of Krishna. At his home, he offers respect to pictures of Krishna and also the preachers of Krishna consciousness. In all regards, he has a very high estimation for Krishna's name and Krishna's activities. Therefore, we offer respects to him without reservation. For we are actually seeing that this gentleman is advancing gradually in Krishna consciousness. Right? So, so we're seeing that, so that's what's respected, because we're dealing with the soul, not with the conditioning. And so then within that conditioning, if there's a willingness to engage in Krishna's service, then that's to be seen as something positive. So, good? Yeah. Such a person should always be shown respect. The conclusion is that anyone who is trying to advance in Krishna consciousness by regularly chanting the holy name should always be respected by Vaishnavas. Yes, yeah, so trying to advance, that doesn't mean that they are, they are trying to. By regularly chanting. On the other hand, we have witnessed that some of our contemporaries who are supposed to be great preachers have gradually fallen into the material conception of life because they have failed to chant the holy name of the Lord. While giving instructions to Sanatana Goswami, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu divided devotional service into three categories. Shastra Yukti, Nahi Jani, Diridha, Shradhavan, Madhyama, Adhikari, Se, Maha, Bhagyavan. A person whose conclusive knowledge of the Shastras is not very strong, 
but who has developed firm faith in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and who also and who, who is also undeterred in the execution of his prescribed devotional service, should be considered a Madhyamadhikari. Such a person is very fortunate. Right, so conclusive knowledge of the Shastras is not very strong. It means that they may know the Shastras, they can deal with it, they can discuss it, but their conclusive knowledge on the, uh, how do you say, the understanding the depth of the Krishna consciousness, what you can gain by that understanding may not be there, but at the same time as they've had that firm faith in the chanting and they're undeterred in, in their performing their pres prescribed duties. So that's where you understand they're fixed, they're, they're solid in that. But they may not have the realization of an uttama. Right? Because the uttama then, they, they have conclusive knowledge in the shastras. Right? So that's why they can never be defeated in the discussion. While the uh, madhyama sometimes, they, they don't have something to say. Somebody says an argument, they don't have anything to say, it happens because they're not always catching always the principal point that's there and they get they get lost in the in the the logic of the discussion and they don't know what to say there but while the uttama since they never lose sight of krishna they'll see how krishna fits into the discussion therefore no matter what someone says how intelligent it is how logical it is they can always find the weakness that's not connected to krishna therefore they can always they always have something to say Okay. So such a person is very fortunate. Chaitanya Chaitanya Madhya Lila 2267. A Madhya Madhikari is a Shraddhavan, a staunchly faithful person. He is actually a candidate for further advancement in devotional service. Right? Because if we're firmly fixed, that makes it very easy to move forward. If we're not firmly fixed, it's harder to move forward. Right? Therefore, in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita Madhya Lila 2264, it is said, Shradhavan uh, Jana Haya Bhakti Adhikar Uttama Madhyama Kanishta Shraddha anu, Anusari. One becomes qualified as a devotee on the elementary platform, the intermediate platform, and then the highest platform of devotional service according to the development of his Shraddha faith. Because actually what's happening is that when, by associating with devotees, we take up that faith in Krishna consciousness. Then that you could say, let's just, just to, for the example, say that's one unit of faith. Then when we advance further, where we take up the association of the devotees more seriously, so that we, then we are identified as on the platform from Shraddha to Sadhu Sangha, the second stage there. That's because now there's two units of Shraddha. And two units of Shraddha, therefore we take up, now we have faith in the devotees. Then when it's three units of Shraddha, then we take up Bhajana Kriya, or the practice of Krishna consciousness. Then when there's four, then we can take seriously the removal of anartas from the heart. Right? And then when it's again you add, then it take, one becomes steady, one becomes fixed, and rather than... Uh, weak in one sort. Then again, then one gets to taste and gets, so prema is, is mentioned as the pure, I mean the full or mature um, faith in Krishna. So it's faith that has developed the whole way. So that's why he's saying that the Kananistamadhyam and Uttama can be defined by their faith. So the more faith, then the higher one goes on the, on the thing. So that's the scene. One, so, uh, we, as we generally see, if one's steady, then that's the easiest way to move forward. And why would you be steady unless there's some faith? Otherwise, why you're doing it? So yes, faith is the momentum. Yes, that's why, as, let's say, one advances to a particular point, you lose faith, then the whole process stops. Right? And so then one may get distracted. And then when one does come back, and take up seriously the Krishna consciousness, one will continue from that same point that he, that he left from. That's the advantage of Krishna consciousness, is something's not left, lost. You know, people get confused, they get distracted by secondary elements, political elements, and all these other kind of things, uh, isms and, and things that aren't actually 
pure devotional service, but they get um, absorbed in those that distracts them from actually trying to understand. Because Krishna consciousness already in, uh, includes all the proper behavior and everything like that. But we focus just on the behavior and not on the devotional service. We get distracted. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Is, is which a distraction? Suffering. Is suffering a distraction from our karma? Is suffering a distraction from our practicing Krishna consciousness? So, um, you had mentioned something before about the Jewish kind of cultural background. You know something of that area? Okay, okay. So, but what I'm saying is, does, has the suffering over the last 4,000 years reduced the absorption in Jews and their Jewishness? But no, no, but that's atheism. That's not their Jewishness. It means you can be an atheist and be a Jew, right? Yeah, so then their Jewishness, because what, what does it say on the wall when you walk into Yad Vashem? It says, remember, right? So therefore, and what's in that museum? All the suffering that they've gone through. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, the tendency is when one's suffering, one tends to remember God, if you're pious. If you're not pious when you're suffering, you think it's everybody else's fault, right? Because I'm fabulous in that. And, you know, at the same time as I would say, some have worked out the perfection that they can think it's everybody else's fault and remember God. So that one, <laughs> that seems to, you know, but you have to, how you say, you would have to be chosen to have that position, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, how are we doing? Okay, again the Chaitanya Shraddha Marita Madhalila 2262, it is said, Shraddha Shabde Vishvasa Kahe Surida Nishchai Krishna Krishne Bhakti Kaile Sarva Karma Kritahoi Shraddha is confident, firm faith that by rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. Such faith is favorable to the discharge of devotional service. So, so this aspect is that everything else is included. That's the important point. Because that answers so many different things. Is that the satisfaction that's there in anything is already included in devotional service because we can see everything in relationship to Krishna. That's the, that's the principle. So when that's there, then one gets more and more fixed in devotional service. Shraddha, faith in Krishna, is the beginning of Krishna consciousness. Faith means strong faith. The words in, in, of the Bhagavad Gita are authoritative instructions for faithful men. And whatever Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita is to be accepted as it is without interpretation. This is the way Arjuna accepted the Bhagavad Gita. After hearing the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna told Krishna, Sarvam etad ritam amanye yanmam vadasi keshava. O oh Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. Bhagavad Gita 10.14. So he's heard, he accepts it, now it's a matter of applying it in life. So that's something that one must always do is that one, one that the purpose, as we said, seva is, is the purpose. You're trying to apply it because then applying it, then you'll please Krishna. So, and from applying it, then we get that more inspiration to learn more how to serve Krishna. So therefore, then we inquire properly. And then from that in proper inquiry, we apply it in our life. Right? 
So that's why then, as we started out, the jigyasu doesn't mean we're just interested because it sounds interesting. It's we're interested so that we can actually apply it into the life. And if we don't apply it into the life, then, then it's not actually, uh, it's not strong faith. That's what it's talking about here. Strong faith means then it, we're, we're fixed in that idea that we are will be doing devotional service and the benefits from it will come. All the other things will go because if everything's Krishna, we can see everything connected to Krishna. So all activities, then the benefits of them, we're looking at them that we're performing the services. Therefore, the benefits are coming because of that, you know, connected with the service, connected with Krishna, by Krishna's grace. Because he's in control of everything. He's in control of the material energy. This is the correct way of understanding the Bhagavad Gita, and this is called Shraddha. It is not that one accepts a, position, a portion of the Bhagavad Gita according to his own whimsical interpretations, and then rejects another portion. This is not Shraddha. Shraddha means accepting the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita in their totality, especially the last instruction, Sarva Dharma Paritya Mam Ekam Sharanam Braja. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. Bhagavad Gita 1866. When one becomes completely faithful in regard to, his, to this instruction, when strong faith becomes the basis for advancing in spiritual life. Right. So if we see that, so the point here is that everything is connected to, means devotional service includes everything else. So with that faith, then one can be absorbed just in Krishna consciousness. One is, in that, one is performing one's duties as a grahasta, taking care of the family, doing all the different things, but one sees all those things connected to Krishna. Not for convenience, but because you actually see how, that's how it works. Like that, and then that will make things work nicely. So we'll stop here. It's time for the Artik. And that's so Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Srila Rupa Goswami Pada Ki. Samaveta Bhaktivinda Ki. Jai Nitai Gauru Premanandi.